Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India marks National Pollution Day while Delhi remains engulfed under smog blanket. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi city worry over rising street crimes. Sri Lanka hopes for tourism revival with 1.5 million arrivals next year. And now for all the details. India on Friday marked the National Pollution Control Day even as its capital continued to remain in a thick blanket of smog. The air quality over the skies of Delhi and its neighboring region is further expected to deteriorate as weather forecast predicts drop in temperature in coming days. India observed the National Pollution Control Day on Friday even as the national capital New Delhi continued to remain under thick blanket of smog. According to data by Safar, the System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research, AQI, the air quality index recorded in Delhi and national capital region was under very poor category. The shallow fog and mist further helped the deterioration of atmosphere. Authorities have advised citizens not to venture out during V hours of a day when the national capital experiences the most smog. And I've been a cyclist for quite a few years. The pollution is devastating in Delhi right now. It used to take me around 15 to 20 minutes to reach India Gate from my location, but now it's taking about more than 40, 45 minutes. So as we see, it is quite uh, irritating and it's causing me heavy breathing. India observes National Pollution Control Day annually, coinciding with the 1984 Bhopal gas tragedy, when a gas leak from the Union Carbide pesticide plant killed at least 3,500 people. Delhi is the world's most polluted capital city, with its 20 million people severely affected by smoke on most winter days. With Safa predicting further drop in mercury, New Delhi residents will likely face difficulty in coming days. India's permanent representative to the UN, Ruchira Khamboj, on Thursday said that India does not need to be told what to do on democracy as she assumed the presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of December. The ambassador said that with India also taking over the G20 presidency will be a watershed moment in its history. India does not need to be told what to do on democracy. Ambassador Ruchira Kamboj, the country's permanent representative to the UN, said on Thursday as she responded to a question on democracy and freedom of press in India. Her remarks came while addressing reporters in New York as she assumed the presidency of the 15-member UN Security Council for the month of December, as part of which India will host signature events on countering terrorism and reformed multilateralism. The presidency will bring the curtains down on India's two-year tenure as elected non-permanent member of the powerful UN body. We don't need to be told what to do on democracy. India is perhaps the most ancient civilization in the world, as all of you know. In India, democracy had roots going back to 2,500 years. 2,500 years. We were always a democracy. The Shakyas and the Lichavis to those of my Indian friends who are here. And coming down to very recent times, we have all, all the pillars of democracy that are intact. Ambassador Kamboj added that India also assuming the presidency of the G20 on Thursday will be a watershed moment in its history. Like during COVID and more such matters, India is already ready to take its place at the global top table, she said. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah Khan on Thursday said the involvement of tehreek e taliban Pakistan in terror activities on Pakistan's soil should be a matter of concern for Afghanistan as well. The statement came a day after the terror outfit claimed responsibility for the suicide attack in Balochistan province. 
Pakistan's interior minister Rana Sanaullah Khan on Thursday said the involvement of TTP the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan in terror activities on Pakistan soil should also raise an alarm for Afghanistan currently under Taliban rule the statement from Sanaullah came a day after the terror outfit claimed responsibility for the suicide attack in Balochistan's Quetta which killed at least 4 people adding further interior minister vowed a crushing response by security forces against TTP in a reference to TTP's statement of ending ceasefire with Pakistan Sanaullah said government never held any formal talks with the terror outfit the earlier talks with TTP were the kind which are held in a state of war he added saira brother mulk afghanistan jise pakistan ki taraf se har kisam ki jo hai wo facility sahulat mat jo hai wo mayassar hai unke liye bhi ek baat jo hai lamba fikriya aur pareshani ka baais honi chahiye ke ttp agar पाकिस्तान के अंदर दहशतगर्दी की कार्रवाइयों में मुलवस न सिर्फ पाई जाए बल्कि जिम्मेदारी भी कबूल करे तो ये इंतहाई जो है वो इस खत्े के अमन के लिए जो है एक खतरनाक चीज है अफगान तालिबान हैड बीन दी नेगोशिएटर बिटवीन दी टी टी पी एंड दी पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट The announcement of ending the ceasefire by TTP came amid the recent visit of South Asian nations junior foreign minister Hina Rabbani Khair to Afghanistan the band outfit while not directly affiliated with Afghanistan's rulers pledge allegiance to them Moving on Pakistan's financial capital Karachi is facing an alarming increase in the menace of street crime with residents worried for their safety Locals have blamed it is the failure of the police, government, and the judicial system, highlighting that criminals now rob people in broad daylight and kill whomsoever they wish to. Residents of Pakistan's financial capital Karachi have expressed they are worried over rising street crimes in the country's largest city, while the law enforcement authorities have failed to curb robberies, kidnappings. and murders in broad daylight locals claim the country's deteriorating economic crisis is forcing people to resort to unwanted crimes especially after the floods hit the region they blame the police and the government have left karachi and its residents at the mercy of criminals sir main to yahi kahunga ki isme sindh hukumat ka hath hai ka sindh hukumat ko nahi pata ki kahan jurm ho rahe hain kahan charas mil rahi hai kahan sharab mil rahi hai ki kyun nahi khatam hoti क्यों नहीं खत्म होती है जो जगह जगह देखते हैं हमारे मोबाइल छीन लेते हैं बाजा हमारे बड़े मोबाइल होते हैं वो छीन लेते हैं मोटरसाइकिल छीन रही होती है पुलिस क्या कर रही है पुलिस तो खामोश बना बना तमाशा देख तमाशा देखती है पुलिस आप देखें सदर में आके आप देखें सही पुलिस वाले आते हैं चुपचाप आए सौ रुपये किसी दो सौ रुपये लेके चल देते हैं यहाँ पे हमने हर जगह पे इलाकों में हम बैठे होते हैं सामने डकेती हो रही होती है मोटरसाइकिल पर आते हैं और लूट के लेके चले जाते हैं और ये इसके लिए अब हुकूमत को गवर्नमेंट को सोचना चाहिए अकॉर्डिंग टू रिपोर्ट बाई दिटीजन पुलिस लाइसेंस कमेटी A total of 7,576 street crime incidents were reported, while 2,260 mobile phones were snatched at gunpoint in October alone. Experts believe the task of maintaining law and order has been further compounded by a non-functional criminal justice system. The UN Security Council has criticized the attack on a religious school in Afghanistan which killed at least 20 students and wounded dozens earlier this week. The 15 member Security Council underscored the need to hold the perpetrators of the attacks accountable. The United Nations Security Council UNSC on Thursday condemned the attack on a religious school in Afghanistan that resulted in the killing of at least 20 students and wounded dozens of other people on Wednesday. In a statement, UNSC said it condemns in the strongest terms the heinous terrorist attack on innocent students and children at the religious school in Samangan province. The 15 member Security Council underscored the need to hold the perpetrators of the attacks accountable. Meanwhile the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan UNAMA said on Thursday they had asked the Taliban to hold a credible investigation into reports of extrajudicial killings including of children in northern Daikundi province 
Unama said in a tweet that there are very serious reports of civilian casualties with extrajudicial killings of at least eight people, including children, in recent days. It added that Unama has engaged the Taliban on the need for credible investigation and accountability. Taliban-run Interior Ministry spokesperson Abdul Nafi Thakur confirmed a gunfight in Daikundi between security force members and suspected armed rebels had resulted in deaths but denied that children had been killed. The Taliban said they are focused on securing the country since taking over last year as foreign forces withdrew. Some resistance groups have said they have been carrying out operations, mostly in the northern province of Panjshir, where they have clashed with Taliban fighters. In September, the Taliban said they had killed 14 resistance members, including four commanders in Panjshir. Sri Lanka's tourism minister, Harin Fernando, has said that the island nation hopes to double tourist arrivals to 1.5 million next year and bring in 5 billion US dollars in vital foreign exchange. Sri Lanka's ongoing economic crisis developed after the COVID-19 pandemic hammered the tourism-reliant economy and slashed remittances from overseas workers. Sri Lanka hopes to double tourist arrivals to 1.5 million next year and bring in 5 billion US dollars in vital foreign exchange, Tourism Minister Harin Fernando told reporters on Thursday. As the island nation seeks ways to tackle its worst financial crisis in seven decades, the country of 22 million people famed for its beaches, ancient temples and aromatic tea has been struggling for months to pay for essential imports of fuel, food and medicine because of a lack of foreign exchange. Sri Lanka would likely end this calendar year with 750,000 tourist arrivals and about 2 billion US dollars in earnings, the minister said, adding his ministry would be targeting high-end tourists and introducing new products in 2023. The Indian Ocean Island is also rolling back nighttime power cuts in tourism zones as the overall electricity situation improves from 13-hour power cuts earlier in the year. Power Minister Kanchana Vijayasekhara said on Wednesday, months of protests, political turmoil, power cuts and fuel queues dampened tourism in Sri Lanka just as it was recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic in mid-2022. An estimated $4 billion loss in tourism revenue over the past two years also contributed to tipping Sri Lanka into the financial crisis, according to former ministers. Sri Lanka reached a staff-level IMF agreement in late August for a $2.9 billion US dollars bailout, but its completion hinges on assurances from creditors on debt restructuring. The ongoing International Sand Art Festival in India's eastern beach town of Puri is witnessing participation of several renowned artists showcasing their craftsmanship. As the event kicked off, Indian artist Sudarshan Patnaik carved the logo of the G20 summit as the country took over the presidency of the grouping, while Canadian artist David Bradley created a dragon sculpture. Have a look. The five-day International Sand Art Festival, which kicked off on Thursday in India's eastern beach town of Puri, is witnessing artists from several countries showcasing their craftsmanship. While Indian sand artist Sudarshan Patnaik carved the logo of the G20 summit on Thursday as the country officially took over the chair of the grouping, Canadian sand artist David Bradley made a dragon sculpture. The event is being attended by a large number of locals, tourists and participants from countries including Singapore, Spain, Russia and Canada. I have created a sand sculpture which is around 20 tons of sand I have used and I have made this sculpture of the logo which is specially created uh, for the G20. For uh, the Odisha festival and uh, a wonderful event with a lot of great young artists and uh, some incredible international sculptors. Every year, the tourism department of the state organizes the International Sand Art Festival for the artists to show their art and talent for the world to see. The festival was started in 2015. This year, over 500,000 visitors are expected at the event, which is being held after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.